we have created safe environments for the most part. Maybe not our younger kids when we were like unconscious, but as we become, we have created safe environments. They're allowed to feel their feelings. They can have an opinion. They can choose what gender they are. There is no like you, there's no like no really coming from us other than, you know, basic functions. So do you think that they're more likely to become chameleons and hide or are they going to protect and scream, right? So let's look at victim perpetrator, right? Let's look at, um, in light, let's look at, um, what's that word? Um, entitlement, right? If I do not get what I want, I scream, right? I don't want to work. You're going to pay me anyways. Mom takes care of everything. And really where this is coming from is our own fight or flight triggers are being activated through our children. We do not want them to feel pain. We do not want them to be hurt. We do not want them hungry for one second. We do not want them starving for anything. So in anticipation of our own fight or flight triggers, fight, flight, or free freeze, we fight for their freedom. Okay. We freeze ourselves for their joy. Okay, we run away and disassociate from certain things that are going on with them because we're not ready to experience it. So your brain is using fight, flight or freeze, not just with you, but your boss is fight or flight, your partner's fight or flight, your ex-husband's fight or flight, your kid's fight or flight. Any wobble that feels like something unsafe is about to happen. My survival is being jeopardized. You are either going to attack the system, become the system, or hide from the system. Which one are you? Well, depends. Are you out there fighting for justice? Are you hiding? Are you pretending? Doesn't matter because you're probably doing it differently. And this answers every one of your questions that you've been asking in the queue. Jess, will fixing my hormones improve my relationships? 100%. Jess, I don't have any weight to lose. Is this going to help me with my trauma? 100%. Because you realize that this separation in your brain that has created the me, right? The, the broken unconscious me that is keeping you safe inside, never letting you play outside, never letting your dreams actually become into fruition, right? Remember, you're right about to walk through the threshold, you get ghosted. You're right about to walk through the threshold, the opportunity disappears. You're right about to walk through the threshold, you sabotage it. You're right about to walk through the threshold, you get sick. Something breaks. Someone attacks you. And it's, see? You're not safe. We've got to keep you in survival. You're going to learn your lesson that outside is no good. And the best reference that I can give you is a movie called Entangled, right? It's a movie about Rapunzel and her beautiful magic hair and her narcissistic mother who needs her light. Okay. This is the ego identity, the broken parts of your brain, the curmudgeon, the criticist, the fight or flight, the one that doesn't understand thriving at all is living in a constant state of separation, lack, judgment, critic criticism, insecurity, poverty, starvation is alive and well right inside of you. And you do not know these things exist. You do not know any part of this brain exists until you get triggered. So triggers are our, our most valuable gurus. They are the most valuable guru that you have next to, because there's always a duality point, the things that inspire you. Now, trigger in a, in a high vibrational perspective is an inspiration. High in intuitive, enlightened awareness of self inspired. Okay. Someone's poking a wound or jeopardizing your survival, that's a negative trigger. And you are going to survive that moment very unconsciously. Now, if your hopes and dreams have been constantly stolen, ghosted, disappeared, abandoned, rejected, right? You haven't been allowed to be this you that you think you are, but you can't really live there. Then when you see an inspiration, this is another PTSD, environmental trigger, is instead of being intuitively inspired by an inspiration, 
you are jealous. Ooh, ouch. You are now in comparison to self. You are in comparison. Why is she have what I don't have? I work harder than her, right? I'm prettier than her. I'm skinnier than her, right? Or she's prettier than me. She's skinnier than me. That's why. You see how your brain will go into surviving the idea of witnessing its own lack through perpetration or victim. Like, well, she's skinnier than me. Her parents loved her. Victim, right? I'm way prettier than her. <sighs> she's a loser. Perpetrator. Whatever makes you feel the safest in your own mind, you will recite and have a conversation with yourself about completely through a program. So if you were a kid, right, like me, who had the opportunity to be, until my parents got into Hollywood, extreme poverty to the point where no beds, no toys, nothing. Um, we always lived, we were always, my parents were always the help, like the maids and blah, blah, blah. We lived in these very, very abundant um, environments. You know, it was always like Beverly Hills, but we were like poor white trash, okay? And of course, I had to go to school with all these kids. So I'm going to school with kids that are allowed to thrive, they, they're allowed to tantrum. They're allowed to talk back. They're allowed to crash their car because they're going to get a new one next week. They're allowed to be completely bleh, everything that they are. Of course, they're beautiful because why not, right? It's radiating their joy. They are allowed to wear clothes that they want. And then there's me who's witnessing this, right? And watching in a state of comparison and being very confused. And you guys are gonna learn the love languages of your ego, inner child, and higher self as we move into the grief um, re resolution program. You're all gonna get it. You decide to discern in that moment of intense confusion that you must just not be good enough or you're not allowed or you don't deserve it. Because when you go home and you ask for those things, just like any child would, mom, can I have a car like they have? Who do you think you are? We're not made of money. Now I have a shame and guilt and I'm humiliated for asking for that, which I want. So now I'm not going to ask. I'm going to freeze. I'm going to disassociate. I'm going to build a mask and I'm going to pretend that I have these things. Okay. So we've all done this in our own way. Maybe you were the rich kid and then you lost everything. Or maybe you were the rich kid that was over nurtured to the point where you were so suffocated by stuff and people and opportunities that you felt trapped 